I'm a single dad to three kids. The oldest is a teen. She and I usually get along for a dad and a teen. I think it could be a lot worse. The story started when our Apple iCloud got screwed up for the umpteenth time. Apple support hasn't helped me with the issue, or they haven't given me a working solution. I'm not a tech guy, but sometimes our texts would show up in each other's inboxes, but not on all devices. I've had my younger son's text show up on my laptop, my texts show up on my daughter's phone, etc. Now, I'm usually a trusting dad, and I delete these threads without reading them as soon as I notice they're there. But this time was different. This may give away our relative location, but whatever. My daughter plans to attend a particular music fest this weekend with some friends. She has a job and bought her ticket on her own. I originally had no issue. She's usually responsible. Well, I saw an interesting message in a thread with her friend that showed up on my phone. At the message read, we should be able to sneak it in if we hide it well. So I snooped. I opened the thread and read it. I was shocked at what I saw. She and her friends are planning on sneaking in drinks, smoke, and something I've personally never heard of. I legitimately don't know what this is, so you can assume I'm freaking out by this point. I scroll up to find the outfits my daughter plans on wearing as well. Now, when I say outfits, that's me being very generous because it looks just like underwear, not an outfit. I decided that I wouldn't allow her to go to the festival. I thought about letting her go, but making sure she's actually wearing clothes and checking her bag before. But even if her bag is clean when she leaves the house, I know she'll find a way to get the stuff. I told her, no, it's not happening, and I would have never okayed it in the first place if I had known her plans. She and I haven't been speaking. She thinks I'm wrong to take away something she spent her own money on. I told her it's not the concert. It's what she's planning on doing there. I can't possibly give my approval knowing about that in advance. She's asking me if I'll reimburse her ticket if I don't allow her to go. I don't think I need to do that either. Maybe I'm a crappy dad, but we're not well off. Each deption, I make enough to provide for my family $300 out of my wallet to give her a concert ticket. Am I the idiot for doing this? I don't think there's a way I can let her go and be confident she won't be messing around and stuff she shouldn't be. Not the idiot. She may think you are, but you're protecting your child and enforcing totally reasonable rules. I would also give the other parents a heads up about what's being planned. They should have the opportunity to decide if they want their children in that situation. Unfortunate for her party plans that you saw her post, but it's best for her safety and health. Reimbursing her tickets would be... Her tickets would be kind, but she's being punished. This isn't about you having to ask her not to go, because something unexpected happened. People end up in sketchy situations at those festivals. She has plenty of time to go when she's not a kid. I would let her sell the ticket. At Pop Trium Erio, I suppose, but would absolutely not let her go and probably ground her for a few weeks. That would be bad parenting if Ope didn't create consequences for this. 
She will be mad, but mad is better than being in the hospital or dead. I might be dramatic. I honestly think you made the right cut you and made your daughter dodge a huge bullet. Maybe I'm overstepping here, but I don't think teens in general should be allowed in Big Fest until they're at least 18. You may have stopped her now, but I guarantee she'll get more sneaky and secretive if you don't have a serious discussion with her. I was a teen girl once. We have our ways. Update. Thanks for all the help. I reached out to two of the girl's parents I know. I calmly explained what happened and that I wouldn't be letting my daughter go. I did not suggest what they should do with their girls. One took it better than the other. I met my sister-in-law, fiancé's sister, six years ago when I first got with my fiancé. When I met her, she was planning her wedding. But to my surprise, the wedding venue she picked is a venue an uncle of mine partly owns and is also a she fat. This was a coincidence, and when I saw the venue she picked, I told her it was just a funny coincidence we talked about. Since high school, my uncle has told my siblings and me that he'll give us a discount if we want to find a venue for our future weddings. My sister got married at a destination wedding and didn't book my uncle's venue. My brother didn't have a reception for his wedding, only a ceremony. So now that it's my turn to get married, I've decided to talk to my uncle about the venue and the discounts. He gave us excellent deals on the food, the decoration, and overall the services. It's a better deal than any other we've heard. Ever. So of course we booked the venue. My sister-in-law found out and said that she considers it disrespectful that we booked the same venue as her. She claims that we're not being original and only booked that venue to mimic her own wedding. I explained to her that I booked that venue because my uncle is part owner and a chef and how he gave us good deals. Plus how I've always had that venue in mind, even before I met my fiancé and way before sister-in-law's wedding. Sister-in-law said it doesn't matter anymore and since she booked it first for her wedding, we should go with another venue and be more original because she scared people will compare our weddings. My fiancé told her she was ridiculous, but since then, Many people have been hostile towards my fiancé and me and accused us of being jealous of sister-in-law, which is why we... Which is why we tried to book that venue. So I'm wondering if we are the idiots and we should book another venue. Well, not the idiot, hun. Is your sister-in-law aware that she's not the only person in history to get married and that having a wedding is not in any way original? Has it perhaps occurred to her that other people she doesn't even know, the whore, might have had their wedding at this exact same venue? And maybe the bride's even more white. They stole her idea. How will she cope? She's insane. Or have your lovely wedding with your lovely discount and ignore her bees. Her argument is no one in our family's ever allowed to use that venue for a wedding because I did it six years ago. Did she lick the walls to mark it like kids do to stop others from eating their stuff? Though Ella, stay strong. Of tea. She's being ridiculous. Oxox of also, who would even remember enough about her wedding six years ago, even to compare the two. 
I didn't even remember enough about my prom to compare to my brothers, and we're only four years apart. Just make a point in the speeches of thanking your uncle, the owner of the venue, for all his help in planning the day, and people will understand why you picked it. My mother suffers from a disability, and as such, she's permanently bedridden. I'm the only person who lives with her in the family house. She has support workers who come by throughout the day to help with hygiene and showering. However, I help with absolutely everything else, cooking, paying bills, errands, organizing home maintenance, checking emails, making her comfortable in bed, and shopping, managing investments, etc. I do not get paid by the government to be her caregiver, nor does she pay me or show her appreciation in any other way. She feels entitled to my help, and it's a thankless job. As part of managing her finances, I logged into her online banking to notice almost $100,000 was missing from her savings account. In further inspection, I saw the money was sent to my sister, 21. She's in college in another city. So I asked my sister about it, and she told me that our mother gifted it to her to buy a highly specced Tesla. I was livid by this. Mothers always treated my sister as the favorite. Apart from the gift, she's probably given her over 100k in other things over the past few years, which I never got. For example, I had to pay for my first car, which I never got. I had to pay for my first car, but she got a brand new one. When I moved to college, Harry, I had to pay for it myself, whereas my wealthy mother paid for her to have a premium unit. I burst into my mother's room, saying I'm sick of the favoritism and how unfair it is because children should be treated equally. She had never known appreciation for my sacrifices to be her de facto caregiver. I can't leave the house overnight, which rules out all holidays. It's been like this for five years since my father died. But initially, I asked if she had any intention of giving me 100k to make up for it, and she said no. During our 30-minute argument, she never directly answered how it was fair, asking questions like, do you feel like you've missed out, among other questions. Finally, it reached a boiling point, and she ultimately said, it's my money and I'll spend it on whatever I want. I said fine. I won't be helping you at all anymore. I've now ignored all of my mother's texts for help over the past two weeks. I've heard from my sister that she's now looking at full-time residential care due to my lack of assistance, which people in my country do as a last resort as the residents are neglected and fed. But poorly, and there's no sense of it being your home. Am I the idiot? Bought the idiot? Yeah, this is just plain favoritism. As you said, she may be bedridden, but you were kind enough to help her with 90 of the household chores and got nothing back for it. She sounds vile and expects you to do everything for her, while your sister gets a Tesla Model S A played paid for by her. This is astounding. You made the right call. Bint. Ix, now go and live your life. Then your sister can race over in her Tesla and help. Absolutely bonkers, quite frankly. The 21-year-old in college needs that car. 
Do not be tricked into going back to take care of her. She and they will use you for years and leave everything to your sister in her will. Yes. I think Ope needs to do some personal introspection and ask herself why she needed to dedicate so much effort to someone who showed so little care. Was there no clear agreement on the arrangement, or was it just expected on everyone's part? Demanding tit-for-tat on finances was not the best response, but there does need to be some appreciation and understanding. So really a pretty simple situation I found myself in. I, 26 male, have been dating my girlfriend. The Allison, 25 female, for three years, living together for the past 16 months. She has a sister named Jane, 30, who is married to her husband, Cody. So obviously, over the last couple of years, We've gotten to know them really well. They seem to have a good relationship for the most part. Allison and I allow Jane to come over often, and recently, she's been menting to us both about her relationship. They were starting to have issues, and she was talking to us about how to fix them. I suggested the obvious ones, couples counseling, more quality time, etc. Jane came over a week later and said Cody and her weren't trying couples counseling because she didn't want to and thought it wouldn't work. What was her bright idea? It was to withhold intimacy from Cody till he changed some of his behavior. I told her straight up that this was a horrible idea. She told me I didn't know Cody as she did and that this would shape him up. Ups forward to last night. Guess who comes over? Bawling her eyes out. Jane said that Cody didn't come home. He was at a hotel when she searched his location on Snapchat. She then went and looked on his iPad and found out that he had downloaded Tinder and was getting notifications on it. Finally, when he showed up at home, she asked where he was and he told her he had met a friend for drinks. Obviously, he was lying. And then she ran over here. I was in the middle of trying to build a desk in the living room and I was watching my favorite baseball team, so I didn't want some crying woman in my earshot. I asked them to go outside if they wanted to talk. I was called heartless and an idiot for not caring. I said I didn't care because I told you so. I said, Jane, you played a stupid game and won a stupid prize. You should have just divorced if you couldn't get Cody to change, not manipulate him. She said she didn't manipulate him and that I was being an idiot. I said, Okay then, please take it to another room. I'm trying to finish this up. My girlfriend thinks I'm being an idiot. I told her I was not her sister's relationship coach and they had some actual things I needed to take care of and her sister was dragging me into her dumb relationship issues. I offered some decent solutions at first and did originally care, but her sister knew more than me apparently, and she found out. Am I the idiot? Yeah, okay, fine. Jane messed around and found out. But I didn't want some crying woman in my earshot. And I had some actual things I needed to take care of. Jeez, you were building a desk, not negotiating a ceasefire. If you have no sympathy to offer, fine. If you just want to rub in what a stupid female Jane is for not taking your advice, which by the way, she didn't ask you for. I don't think you're in as much of a position to be dishing out guidance to other people on that subject 
as you seem to believe. Everyone's the idiot here. Agree, everyone's the idiot here. She's for trying a widely failed method. He is for obvious reasons. And you are because the biggest reason for your eye told you so was interrupted man time. Your sister-in-law is going through a crisis, even if it was self-made. Do you know what you did here? You chose baseball over your girlfriend. I'm sure she's grateful for you, putting her between a rock and a hard place. Complause. Sorry. I honestly don't think not having intimacy for a little bit validates cheating. I don't think she did this to herself. He probably already was thinking about it. Cheating is more about the person who chooses to cheat. So she did it to herself is BS. You are the idiot. Her husband cheating on her was a decision he made. Blaming the wife for her husband's choices is a bit unfair. If you didn't want to be involved in the first place, you should have talked to your girlfriend from the start to talk it out far away from your earshot far away from your earshot considering your attitude towards your girlfriend's sister I'd start changing your attitude or you'll start having your own relationship problems if you don't already like a week ago I had dinner at my girlfriend's place and her mom made this divine pasta she said her family had craftily modified the sauce recipe across generations, and everyone who learned it was sworn to secrecy. Later, yes, I was craving it again, so I asked my girlfriend to make it since she knew the secret family recipe. She agreed and went out to get groceries for it, along with some other stuff I asked her to pick up for me. After dinner, I asked her how much I owed her for the stuff she bought for me, and she said, I don't remember, just check the bill. I checked it, and while looking for my stuff on it, I found a bunch of really unique and surprising ingredients that I figured she must have added to the pasta sauce. Of course, I love reverse engineering dishes and figuring out their recipes, so I had some suspicion already. I figured out the rest of the ingredients that she already had at home by taste. So I decided to try my hand at the recipe based on the information at hand and made what I can call a pretty much perfect copy. I had her try it to confirm and she asked me how I managed to figure out the mystery ingredients, and I confess the grocery bill was a big help. She's upset because she suspected I tricked her into making it and is saying that she failed her family by not guarding the recipe well enough. After I explained myself, she believed it was an accident but thinks I should have pushed it out of my mind as soon as I learned about it and respected the secrecy instead of making the sauce. I'm parenty. You are the idiot. You snooped and furred the recipe and actively tested your assumptions. You knew it was important for her to have it be kept a secret, so you went out of your way to show her up. Couldn't you have just let her have this thing? This was something she shared with her family. You didn't need it. For if OB had to have it so bad, don't rub her nose in it or ask her to confirm the ingredients. I know people go back and forth about secret family recipes. I think if it means something to someone to keep it secret, then respect that. Diddle with it on your own time if you ever break up and can't live without it. But don't go around like so. I cracked the code. You couldn't respect her wishes or the wishes of her family. 
it's a pasta sauce, not state secrets. Some of these comments are ridiculous. He just made himself some pasta. Regarding recipes has always been absurd to me. Like if I make something someone enjoys and they want to know the recipe, yeah, why gatekeep food? Big time seconding this. Food is probably the universal expression for every culture and brings people together. The idea of secret family recipes is so bizarre to me. People who get angry over secret recipes are the reason good recipes get lost to the world. These stories always crack me up. This recipe has gathered so many generations of my family together. There was never a wedding or a funeral without this dish. It's been our comfort since we came to this country. It's our ultimate familial expression of love. X, now buzz off and get the heck away. Who on earth do you think you are? You piece of crap. How dare you figure out the ingredients? Like, yeah, an awesome tradition you have there. 